morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz. Happy Friday to all watching another detailed forecast update coming your way today. We're going to look at some storms heading for Western Australia, some shower storms and snow heading for Southeastern Australia, some hot weather across Central Australia and some heavy rainfall that's possible up in far North Queensland over the next 10 days. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. That is uh, greatly appreciated. We're going to start things off over in the southwest of Western Australia. We've had a nice cold front blow through last night with another one just a couple of hours away from the coastline, which you can see on the satellite imagery right now. It's about to blow through the southwest with some heavy showers possible in the next hour or so for Perth and surrounding suburbs. And by the time this video comes out, I reckon this front will be well and truly ashore. You can see on the radar as well, we've got some heavy showers just starting to approach the coastline at this time. Nothing crazy, but still we could be seeing rainfall accumulations over the next couple of hours, amount to 10 millimetres across parts of the southwest and slightly heavier along the hills and some of the ranges down towards Bunbury and Harvey. Um, some cool temperatures were reported overnight, but they are starting to warm up a little bit. We're expecting a rather mild top today powered by these northwesterly conditions. It will be an early maximum, especially for locations around Perth, with maximum temperatures into the low 20s expected in the coming hour or so. But after this cold front sweeps through, the temperatures will plummet with a nice rain band expected in this system's wake, which will be bringing showers right through this afternoon and evening and making for a rather unpleasant night, all things considered. Now, before I go any further, I'd like to say, just go, uh, just do me a favour here and go out and check your car if you do live in Perth last night. Is it covered in, like, salt spots or dust spots or something? Like, really big watermarks? Because I think because of the very strong winds last night, it stirred up a lot of salt from the ocean. My car was covered in them. Take a look at it right now. Um, and, yeah, yeah, it's just made for all around a pretty nasty driving experience with a filthy car and constantly using the wipers to clean the windscreen because it's just absolutely filthy. It's not pleasant at all. But yeah, hopefully the winds will be slightly calmer today so the showers won't pick up as much salt and dump it all over our cars, homes and so forth because it certainly was something that I didn't expect last night. Now throughout the course of today, the showers will pick up before about midday with a chance of a thunderstorm around the Perth metro area, especially into the southern suburbs around the coast. We're expecting the chance of thunderstorms until the early evening hours. Showers are also possible out in the uh, wheat belt, especially into the central wheat belt out towards Corridge and Lake Grace and Ravensthorpe. Showers are possible into this evening. Showers will continue for the southwest coast in the Perth area right through tonight. They will pick up early tomorrow morning as another cold front sweeps up from the south and impacts areas between Jury and Bay right down towards the southwest capes and Albany with rainfall accumulations up 20 millimetres possible before 9am Saturday or tomorrow morning. So certainly going to be quite a wet start to the weekend. And these showers here also bring the chance of some damaging winds, especially in the wake of the cold front. Between around 8am Saturday to around midday Saturday, the risk of damaging winds does remain quite high across the Perth metro area and the southwest capes. And I'm surprised a severe weather warning hasn't been issued for wind gusts possible up to 100 kilometres an hour, which is what we are looking at the chances of, especially along the southwest capes and for exposed coastal locations such as Ocean Reef, Garden Island and Rottnest Island. The chance of some significant wind gusts is certainly possible. Now, tomorrow morning, I have also highlighted of the chance in previous videos about a week ago of a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak in the uh, wake of this cold front. I don't think that's going to be the case anymore. I think this cold front's just going to be moving too fast to blow up some thunderstorms in the front of it. So again, I don't think tomorrow's cold front is going to be that violent for the southwest, but there is always a chance of some thunderstorms and obviously the chance of water spouts as well. Just with how warm the Lewin current is running, we could be seeing potentially severe thunderstorms approach the coastline tomorrow. So again, I would keep things I'd keep a close eye on the radar if I was you, because it looks like we could be seeing some pretty heavy showers and some pretty strong storms sweep up. Now, Saturday night, it will be a return to the cool, calm and dry conditions, powered by a high pressure ridge that's going to build itself over the central wheat belt and into the northern wheat belt parts of Western Australia. That's going to be uh, giving way to some cool, calm, dry conditions, like I have said, through Sunday, Monday and into Tuesday next week before the showers pipe up again from a cold front early Tuesday morning. And that is kind of the weather, the, the significant winter weather over the coming couple of days. There is the chance of cold fronts into the end of August and also for the start of September. Uh, however, it looks like we're going to be seeing a bit more of a return to the spring-like weather. So this is a good forecast indeed, especially for those that are getting a bit fed up of winter at this time. It looks like it, the weather is starting to clear out at this time. It looks like things are starting to turn a little bit more pleasant and a little bit more spring-like. I think this will be the last series of cold fronts ending off by around Thursday next uh, week. And then after that, it looks like a return to some more... Uh, spring like some more change like weather so we'll keep a very close eye on things with the weather forecast but it looks like we're definitely getting a return to some cooler calmer drier conditions 
Now, another thing that I would like to talk about is the chance of rainfall accumulations on each given day. So throughout the course of today, with this cold front that's going to be coming through up to 15 millimetres across the Perth hills, about 10 millimetres of the Perth metro area, slightly less rainfall across the northern and the coastal suburbs. Uh, the southeast expecting the most amount of rainfall and the highest accumulations will likely be around dwelling up in Jaredale with up to 25 millimetres. Negligible accumulations making it out into the wheat belt, just a couple of millimetres expected across some places. But with thunderstorms, we could be seeing accumulations up to 15 millimetres of parts of the central wheat belt. Again, nothing crazy there. Uh, tomorrow is where the real rain is going to be coming in. Again, this is the most significant rainfall that we'll be seeing for quite a, a while, probably at least two weeks or so across the southwest. But take a look at this, only about 25 millimetres from tomorrow's front. And that is in stark contrast to the Bureau of Meteorology expecting up to 50 millimetres tomorrow for some of these locations. I think that they're definitely calling for a much more severe weather event than what the other forecast models are calling for, especially considering the GFS isn't calling for anywhere near that kind of rainfall. And the same thing with the Axis G3. All forecast models are calling for a pretty small amount of rainfall to come through tomorrow. And I think the forecast from the Bureau of Neology is definitely stretching it a little bit. Again, in saying that, I wouldn't be surprised if some locations, especially around Mundaring or down towards Dwelling Up, picked up 50 millimetres of rain to the 9am on Saturday, but I would be surprised if it was as widespread as what the Bureau of Meteorology is suggesting. I think the rainfall accumulations tomorrow will be a lot lighter and a lot of people will end up calling this cold front a bit of a fizzer. Now, showers will continue through the early parts of next week, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday as well. The chances of showers do continue. And then Thursday, again, another chance of showers, but it doesn't look like there's going to be much rainfall beyond that. And that gives way to 10-day rainfall accumulations not looking as grand as what they have once looked. Across the southwest, there will be peak accumulations above 50 millimetres up to 60 millimetres across the hills, but again, the majority of that coming through today and tomorrow. A couple of good showers as well around the Perth metro area will amount to 30 millimetres over the next 10 days, but apart from that, the rainfall's starting to really dry out here, but we have had a pretty wet winter. My weather station so far this year has picked up 800 millimetres, which is a significant amount of rainfall. It's a huge amount of rainfall, actually, and it's certainly made up for the incredibly dry start that we have, considering the majority of that has fallen May, June, July, and August, with a little bit more expected. I would not be surprised if we crossed a metre of rainfall this year across parts of the southwest, um, especially in the hills and down towards the southwest corner. I would not be surprised if some weather stations picked up a metre of rainfall this year, which is very good rainfall indeed. Now, that basically does it for Western Australia, at least the southwest. We will touch on Western Australia again later on in the video uh, for a heat forecast. However, we're going to move over to Tasmania, Victoria, and parts of New South Wales, where a series of cold fronts is expected to be bringing some winter conditions once again to those states. Um, we are expecting warmer than average temperatures across New South Wales today, and that's being powered by northwesterly and northerly winds funneling into Victoria, which does give way for the chance of thunderstorms later tonight across Victoria and New South Wales and into early tomorrow morning as well, with showers and storms expected across the northern coast of Tasmania too, with up to 20 millimetres of rainfall expected across parts of Victoria, Tasmania and about 10 millimetres for New South Wales. More showers and storms on Sunday as well, especially Sunday afternoon into Victoria and New South Wales. There's going to be a lot of energy in the environment and I would not be surprised if severe thunderstorms with damaging winds and heavy rainfall did um, occur Sunday night or Sunday afternoon across Victoria and New South Wales with their greatest chance being between 4 and 7 p.m. local time into the south um, eastern corner of New South Wales against the dividing range and also into the northeastern corner of Victoria uh, around Albury and Wagga Wagga, that sort of area. So certainly the chance of some heavy falls there and that will turn into snow Monday morning across parts of the highlands above 1600 metres with snow also expected from a cold front Tuesday evening across Tasmania and then snow showers continuing through Tasmania and the highlands of Victoria and New South Wales with a return to winter-like conditions from Tuesday afternoon right through Wednesday, Thursday and Friday next week and even into the early parts of next weekend with just a constant stream of rain from the Roaring Forties which is going to amount to huge accumulations across Tasmania. Take a look at this, up to 250 millimetres expected across parts of the Tasmanian highlands over the next 10 days and the majority of that actually falling between uh, Tuesday and Saturday next week. Just take a look at this here. Massive rainfall accumulations are possible in just those five days, up to 150 millimetres there for the west coast of Tasmania. And some big accumulations as well into Victoria, especially around the highlands with above 100 millimetres possible through there. And along the south coast as well of Victoria, some pretty good accumulations also possible down towards Wilson's Promontory, up to 150 millimetres. Melbourne, however, missing out on the really significant rainfall, only about 25 millimetres there. The eastern suburbs, however, will cop the 
majority of that rainfall. Some pretty big accumulations also expected into New South Wales around the highlands. So yeah, it looks like from these thunderstorms that will be coming through Tuesday night and then the rainfall that's going to be streaming through, especially for Tasmania, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, some pretty significant rainfall accumulations are now on the cards. And that also means some pretty good snowfall accumulations as well. Again, the eastern will be over keeping it real with up to a metre of snow expected across parts of the Tasmanian highlands. That's great congruency from yesterday's forecast. So it looks like we can say for a pretty uh, high degree of certainty that there's a very significant amount of snow coming through, especially Wednesday, Thursday and Friday next week for parts of Tasmania. So it looks like snow lovers are going to get one late season buff to the skiing season which will continue that skiing season into it will deep into September by the looks of things, with some good accumulations also expected along the highlands of New South Wales and Victoria. Now, given the warm temperatures as well, I would not be exper expecting snow any be anywhere below 1,200 metres for parts of New South Wales or Victoria, and below 1,000 metres for Tasmania. I think the temperatures are just starting to warm up a little bit too much now for parts of uh, these states. I reckon Tasmania on Wednesday and Thursday, there's a chance of snow down to about 700 metres, but I don't think it'll creep any lower than that. Uh, um, the, of course, Eastern Bluff does exaggerate the extent of the snowfall, but I reckon the accumulations of up to a metre along the high peaks certainly possible at this time. Cradle Mountain, Mount Ossa, Ben Lomond, that sort of area. Some pretty significant accumulations are of course possible but into New South Wales and Victoria it's going to be concentrated on the highest of peaks and not around other peaks uh, just because of the nature of the climate at this time it's just starting to warm up a little bit too much now that we're into late August and these little snowfall accumulations across Victoria the south of Victoria I don't think that's going to be happening that's just a bit of a model fluke here again wet snow down towards 400 meters is possible but again don't expect anything to settle at all this all starting from about Tuesday night remember through Wednesday Thursday and Friday with the heaviest of snow expected Wednesday night and into early Thursday morning before it does start to ease off of Victoria and New South Wales continuing through Thursday and Friday though for Tasmania. Any questions or comments on this weather event please do let me know in the comment section down below but it does certainly look like some pretty significant winter weather is going to come through to end off winter season 2024 and this is something very interesting on the forecast and you can see this is also likely to be drought quenching rainfall for parts of Victoria and New South Wales as well. They're currently uh, embedded in mild to moderate drought like conditions and it's only going to be the northwest of the state and the southwest of New South Wales it's going to be embedded in drought at this time or this time next week rather so this is some very good news for farmers who are currently struggling with some very dry weather conditions this time this will likely be some very good rainfall to add to that soil moisture uh, which they do desperately need in order to get a good harvest this farming and cropping season but yeah that basically does it for the southwest and in fact for winter weather this forecast update before we go and take a look at tropical far north Queensland I would like to talk about temperatures across the central parts of Australia from today they're really going to be warming up and you can see temperatures already above 30 degrees Celsius in parts of Queensland, the Northern Territory and even in towards South Australia as well. Now again this is nothing unusual for this time of the year, it's about now when the temperatures really do start to warm up significantly but powered by low pressure ridges and troughs across the central parts of the nation we're going to be seeing temperatures soar up to 40 degrees celsius throughout the coming couple of days 39 tomorrow across parts of south australia especially around udendata and minterby some pretty warm temperatures expected there and then tomorrow as well uh, sunday rather we're going to be seeing temperatures up to 38 for parts of the northern territory queensland and up towards 35 or 36 across parts of northern new south wales as well around tiabura monday is also going to be pretty warm across parts of the northeast of New South Wales and even into the southeast of Queensland as well with temperatures as high as 30 degrees Celsius for Brisbane and Lismore and Grafton that sort of area. Temperatures also going to be warming up once again on Tuesday after a little bit of reprieve on Monday for parts of South Australia especially into Western Australia as well. Just take a look at this big swathe of 40 plus degree temperatures outside of Broome and Roebuck. Very warm indeed especially for August. We're looking at temperatures about 12 degrees Celsius above average at this time and warm again on Wednesday and Thursday next week before they do just start to come down a little bit but it looks like the warm is now well and truly set for Western Australia and the Northern Territory with temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius expected to continue for around seven months now for those parts of uh, each state. Queensland and New South Wales a little bit more of a wild card. I do still think temperatures will be above 35 from about here on out for parts of central Queensland and especially into Western Queensland as well but for New South Wales and South Australia and to parts of Southern Queensland I think temperatures will still be a little bit more variable and a little bit more volatile for a couple more months but still very warm for a lot of 
uh, Western Australia and the Northern Territory. Uh, again, very much typical for this time of the year. I'm not saying that this is out of the ordinary, and I know there's going to be someone in the comments that says, oh, hot in Australia, who would have guessed? However, uh, especially for this time of year, this is starting to warm up, and it is very much a rapid increase in temperatures. It is a sharp end to winter, like I did say in April, uh, and with temperatures about 12 degrees Celsius above the mean for some of these locations into New South Wales and Queensland, and about 10 degrees Celsius above average for the Northern Territory and Western Australia over the coming week or so. Now we're going to move up into far north Queensland and just quickly have a little look at them. They are looking at the chance of some showers over the coming couple of days. We've got showers continuing throughout the morning hours of today and into this afternoon and evening. 50 millimetres has fallen for a couple of locations over the past 24 hours, and that does amount to three-day accumulations approaching uh, 200 millimetres for areas around Innisfail and Tully. There'll be a little bit of reprieve to the rainfall with a dry Saturday, Sunday and Monday expected before a couple of showers return Tuesday and Wednesday from an onshore flow. Thursday and Friday looking dry and it looks actually pretty dry right through Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday into early September. But again, I would not be surprised if by the end of September we're looking at pretty consistent uh, shower bands streaming ashore because it's not long now, only about a month or so until those weather conditions really do start to wet up quite significantly. Now with daily accumulations only expected to be a couple of millimetres on the forecast, you can extrapolate these forecasts a little bit. I tend to double the rainfall here. Uh, so rainfall accumulations on the forecast models of around 20 millimetres. I tend to get away with doubling that and you can see three day accumulations up to 40 or 50 millimetres is possible for some areas. Again, this is not heavy rainfall for far north Queensland, but just the heads up showers be streaming ashore Friday and Saturday and then Monday and Tuesday next week before a couple of days of dry weather look to be following it. It's not really warming up in far north Queensland yet either. I know we just talked about the north of Queensland getting slammed by 40 degree temperatures or so or thereabouts over the coming week or so but it isn't so much for far north Queensland at this time. However it would not be long until the temperatures really do start warming up there again. That basically does it for the forecast up to today. If I have left anything unanswered or if you've got a question or comment about something that I've missed or a forecast for your location or a report for your location even, then please do let me know in the comment section down below and I look forward to getting back to as many people as I can throughout the course of today. Thank you so much for the support in the videos recently. It really does mean a lot and if you want to show your support, you can click the join button down below and you can also subscribe to the channel. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I could not run this show without them so again, their support is greatly appreciated. But that is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.